Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Black and Black Cinema. I'm your host, Jay. I'm here with my co-host, Micah. Hey. And Terrence. What's up? All right, guys, we're back. This is episode 163, Us. This is obviously the 2018 film uh, by... 19. Jo- I just came out this year. 2019? Jesus Christ, this year is moving <laughs> way too fast. Uh, 2019 film by Jordan Peele. Uh, this is obviously his second horror movie, um, starring Lupita Nyong'o, Winston Duke, um, uh, Shahadi Wright Joseph, Evan Alex, Elizabeth Moss, and Tim Heidecker. Uh, it follows the story of Lupita Nyong'o's character as uh, her and her family are on summer vacation uh, in Santa Cruz, and they are attacked by a group of uh, doppelgangers. Um, we've all seen this movie multiple times at this point. Uh, I'll start with Terrence. You are the horror movie guy. So uh, what did you think? Uh, we I think we saw it in the movie. Right? Yeah, we did. Yeah, we, we saw it, on the screener. We saw it yep. at the screener. Um, I liked it then, and I still like it. Um, I still think uh, Get Out Get Out is a better movie, of course. Um, sure, but this was just like a just a straightforward just horror movie with a little bit of you know make shit that make you think. Um, it's it's good. Uh, I didn't have on upon second viewing. I still enjoy it, but I think like the hype of it being when, when we first saw it mm-hmm. made me enjoy it uh, way more the first time. Um, it's just a, it's just a solid horror movie. Well, I don't even consider it a horror movie to be honest with you. I don't think it is. Yeah, either. it's just like a, a solid second effort from him. Thriller, everything's I guess. fine. Like Lupita Nyong'o, I got watched it, watching it last night. She's really good in this movie. And she's just great <laughs> in it. Winston Duke being the kid, the comedy, uh, comic relief, he was funny. Um, it's just it's just a great movie that kind of makes you think a little bit, but I mean it's not it doesn't blow you away. Okay, there you go. It's pretty it's pretty solid. Like it. Yeah, I I um I enjoyed this movie. This this movie uh suffered from the yeah. the success of Get Out and the hype you machine. know the hype machine. Man, everybody everybody wanted uh, us to be some sort of transformative cinema experience like get out was for a lot of people and nah man like this is just a a, an extended twilight zone episode um and jordan peele said that but uh you know why why would anyone believe the writer director (laughs) producer and (laughs) produce that like uh, all right i so i think people were a little disappointed uh unjustly i think this is a solid ass movie um uh, with great performances from everyone, I really appreciate Winston Duke, this big nigga, <laughs> being like a dad. Like very much a dad. He's very much a dad. And I remember seeing comments online about you know yeah. how yeah. Winston Duke was a bitch in this movie. First of all, he killed two of the motherfuckers by himself, and second of all, he's a regular dude, yo. He's not in Baku. Like he's not a <laughs> fucking monkey man. Like he's he's a dad. He's a, he's a dad telling dad jokes, telling kids not to do drugs while playing. I got five on it on the radio. Yeah? Like <laughs> that show was so funny. What's this talking about? It's about drugs. Uh, no, it's not. Don't do drugs. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't under, I don't understand that man. And um, I mean, look, Lupita Nyong'o gives a, 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 a an incredible dual performance. Um, all of them do, but Lupita Nyong'o really really stands out. And. Um, yeah, man. I, this movie, I think, is trying to. I mean, I may, I might be reading too much into it, but I think the movie is trying to discuss like race. Oh, not race. Uh, class. You it know, is. with haves and have-nots exactly. being, you know, the the above yeah. people and the tethered, and you know, that stuff is not lost on me. But um, you know, it's a it's a solid it's a solid ass movie. Terrence, you're right. Get Out, I think, is a much better film, not just in terms of themes but in terms of what i think he was trying to accomplish yeah um but yeah i i I really enjoy it and i'm glad to see that this dude jordan peele is um he's for real man like he's he's the real deal he's not just some he's not a guy that got lucky like he he knows what he's doing okay uh so yeah, I would I would echo, uh, echo a lot of you guys' uh, sentiments. I actually found watching it a second time, I actually enjoyed it more than 
than I did the first time. And I really enjoyed it the first time. Mm. Um, but sort of, I think taking out the sort of anticipation of like me trying to get what the message is constantly right. and just being able to kind of appreciate it. I think the message kind of comes a little easier right. um, for me. Um, and I felt that same way about get out. Like, I, I mean, I got it obviously, but then you watch it a second time. You're like, wow, okay, I got it. But like now I'm getting all these extra things. Um, I, I agree with you, Micah, that the movie suffers from the success of Get Out. And it also suffers from hard-headedness of people who don't want to actually listen right. to a, the director <laughs> tell them that this is not a, a, a not a message about race or something like that. Um, and it's easy to understand why people would go that route, right? Like, you, you can totally understand. Yeah, but as soon as the director says it's not, I, I'm willing to believe him. No, nah, he's lying. He's trying to trick even, you. Know? Even if it's just... You know, like cognitive dissonance, right? Like, um, even if it's just me buying into it just to hopefully be fooled. Yeah, so you can enjoy So the I movie. can enjoy the movie. Right. Like, but people don't want to do that. People just want to be right. And yeah. They don't want to enjoy shit. Right. Um, I think it is, I think it is a hell of a sophomore uh, attempt from something that was so yeah. well received for Get Out. Because normally it's like you get Get Out and then it's like, you don't know, get it, like, you get something really bad coming right after that just because it's like oh i hope i nail it i hope i nail it and you're kind of thinking too much um so i thought it was a really good sophomore effort what i liked about it i mean i think you're right that the movie deals with the whole idea of the haves and have nots right like i I think that's it's interesting that he does race in his first movie and deals with class uh in the second and people just kind of totally miss that yeah they just totally miss that whole message I I, I I just I, I I literally don't know how you, especially seeing it a second time. Like I can understand, like the first time you're just kind of in the moment, but yeah. and the second time you're seeing it, I mean it's glaring, right? It's glaring. Like the thing starts off with hands across America for God's sake, right? Like it's and and it's literally. Hey, we'll go. We'll get right through it. But I, I I just think that if you actually watch the movie for what it is, not for what you hope it is. I think, and that happens in movies a lot these days, uh, with like everybody trying to guess the plot of like, you know, like Marvel movies and things like that. You're trying to figure out what the next steps are. When you stop doing that and just watch a movie for what it is as it's presented, I think that that bodes a lot better for films. Um, Yeah, I think it's a fun time. I I think Lupita Nyong'o's performance is excellent. Like, one thing that you see, it's like her career kind of mirrors Jordan Peele's career, which is Everybody wasn't sure if her performance in 12 Years a Slave, while fantastic and she won the Oscar and she deserved it, was that a fly-by-night kind of a one-shot thing? And, mm-hmm. like, can she really hold up and do something different? She was, like, in The Commuter and a bunch of other bullshit. And I was like, oh, <laughs> man, they putting her in. They taking this black woman. They just No, she wasn't in The Commuter. She was on the one in the plane. Whatever, this same movie. <laughs> I don't know. Like, flight plan? Flight deck? Flight deck? Was it flight plan? No, Flight Plan is the uh, that's the one with Jodie Foster. Is it, you talking about the Liam Neeson movie? Yeah. Oh, what was that movie called, man? God was damn it, Liam Neeson. Yeah, it was. That's why I'm convinced. That's why I'm confusing with the commuter. I don't know. It was like the flight attendant or some other fucking Air Marshal Home. It might have been. I don't know. The Liam Neeson's movies are fucking terrible. Jesus Christ, that guy was in fucking Schindler's List. <laughs> yeah, that's a, talk about a slide. Schindler's List trying to kill a black person for no random ass reason, and the commuter. Like it was just like directly in the in that uh, series. Nonstop. Hey, yeah, man. something. Good yeah, Lord. something flight related. Red Eye. <laughs> oh wait, that's a different flight movie. <laughs> I like that flight. movie. Oh wait, that's a different flight wait, movie. Who was in Red Eye? Wasn't that's that, um, that was the, uh, from, the Scarecrow. Uh, yeah, the yeah, guy yeah. with the pretty eyes. Yeah, um, what the hell is his name? I keep wanting to say Crispin Glover. I always get them next. It's next not Crispin Glover. Glover. Ronan Farrow. <laughs> <laughs> Ronan Farrow, <laughs> the other guy. I know you're talking about. Sam Murphy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that was a that's a Wes Craven movie. Yeah, really, head, I, I really like that movie. Yeah, I do. Like, I I used to own it on DVD. Yeah, when he head butted it on the fucking plane, it was fucked up. Um, yeah, you should see that movie, guys. Uh, so, yeah, so I I like that Jordan Peele, at least in my eyes, is not a a one shot guy. He clearly knows what he's doing, like you said. Uh, and Lupita Nyong'o is not clearly a one shot. Luckily, got the Oscar kind of actress. Like she's got real skill. Yeah, and to pull off these these dual performances, I thought were really um, quite good. 
I also really enjoyed Winston Duke. I thought he was great. And we'll talk about the controversy surrounding him because I, I would 100% agree with you. The kids, I thought, were really quite good, yeah, too. Yeah, I think that's yeah, introducing the, 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 yeah, the, the son. The son yeah. yeah, he's never acted before. He was very good. He was very good. And his part was pretty significant. So I, I did like that. Um, also, the just as a side note, it's just nice to see a movie just, they're just all black people. Like, yeah. yeah, I mean, you've got two white characters. You you, you got um, Elizabeth Moss and uh, uh, Tim uh, Heidecker. But, like, they're not in it that much. Like, they're in it for two scenes, and it's, like, pretty brief. It's mostly just watching them get murdered. Um, but for the most part, the movie is 99.9% black. And it was just kind of dope to see them. I like dark-skinned black people. I like them yeah. fake black people like <laughs> Michael Ealy and shit. <laughs> <laughs> Like oh. people with deep brown skin and brown yeah, like eyes. The whole family, like the the casting was properly done. Right. Yeah. 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 Like it two wasn't just dark skin parents and like a light skinned fucking son. Like that don't work. <laughs> like nigga, how is Zoe Kravitz their daughter? Like that don't make no sense. Like, everybody was dark. Right. And that's and that's just nice to see. Yeah. And it and it was and it wasn't a story. I mean, obviously we did episode one sixty two uh for Candyman that was a very decidedly black film, but Still had the hardline focus on slavery and yeah. Cabrini Green, like so they couldn't pull themselves out of these stereotypical black settings. Um, where us was just like, this is a family going to Santa Cruz Beach, like right. <laughs> that's it, and they were just a black family, and I just that's kind of nice to see. I, I have to say, um, but yeah, I, I thought it was I thought it was really good, and I certainly enjoyed it more watching it the second time. Um, this movie did very well in theaters. Um, again, Jordan Peele, the master of the fucking micro budget, uh, twenty million dollars with a box office of two hundred fifty-five million. So good for him. That's great. Um, and then he's got other actors in this. Uh, like um, he doesn't really show its face uh, at all. But Yahya Abdul Mateen, right. the second, is he's in this movie too, which is dope because he's he's his. Candyman in the Candyman reboot, which is cool. So I, I look forward to seeing him uh, show up as well. Um, all right, so let's get right into it. Oh, actually, before we do, um, make sure that you go to blackonblackcinema.com slash submit to submit uh, movie ideas. Do us a favor. Follow the directions of the form that's there. You can submit as many movies as you want. You just have to do them one at a time. Uh, if you don't follow directions, I will delete it. Um, I'm just telling you. Like, don't write a sentence out for the movie title. Just write the movie title and give us your name. That's the only thing you have to do. Um, also, um, make sure you are, if you're submitting a movie, make sure we haven't done it, right? Because then you're just kind of wasting your time and you're wasting our time as well. So um, just make sure you go to blackandblackcinema.com slash submit to uh, submit your movie ideas. All right. Um, getting right into it, we see like the opening of the film is they, they have these texts talking about these thousands of miles of tunnel uh, beneath the continental United States and how these abandoned subway systems are, um, are, are unused routes and some of them have no use at all. And so that's just the kind of <clears throat> bill to, you know, kind of foreshadowing kind of thing. Um, this, play, this takes place, I want to say, 1986? Yes. Yeah. In the beginning, yeah. Um, and... In the beginning, yeah. And so there, we see a television play with uh, a commercial for Hands Across America, which was this whole project, uh, like literally, I think it was 6.5 million people holding hands across the continental United States to bring awareness to the homeless and, you know, sort of the disaffected. To bring, to bring awareness to the have-nots. Right. <laughs> What a, what a, cr right, it's right there. <laughs> it's right in your face. It's yeah. right there. It's the first thing you see. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, there's also tapes on the shelf for Goonies and Chud. You know, yeah. it's, it's, you know, Goonies hyper-focused on kids, you know, like kids, you know, doing their own adventure and kind of making their own way. Chud is about, I forget what Chud stands for, but it's like, under you know underground uh, dwellers or whatever like cinematic happenings under development <laughs> is that, that website it? still around yes like, i think it is yeah it has a website yeah. a movie website yeah called you that's right <laughs> wow yeah holy shit wow you are absolutely right so so the film opens up in 1986 uh in santa cruz um Father, uh, father, uh, wife, and uh, their daughter uh, at this um, carnival, and the the husband and wife have like a real contentious sort of relationship. Like the dad's like, 
oh, I can't even have a goddamn beer. Like, like he was not I mean, pleased. This is a 1987, uh, 86 dad if I've ever seen one. Just like fucking mad. Oh, I can't have a beer? Everything I do is wrong now, huh? I'm going to go have a smoke. Fuck you. Like, all right, all right, all right. Calm down. Again, <laughs> wildly specific. <laughs> Just saying. Um, so we see everybody, um, everybody walking around the carnival, and you know she's walking around with her parents. And again, very dark skin family. Like that is a big. That is a. That is not a thing to to miss here. Like because you don't see this. Uh, here's a bit of trivia for you. This sure. little girl is the daughter of Black Manta and Starfire. Those two actors play Black Manta and Starfire oh, okay. in that's, DC projects. That's interesting. Okay. Very cool. Well, there. Who, Pete, I don't know uh, who the fuck they are. That's them. That's them. Yeah, those are her actual parents. The parents that... Oh, they, in this movie? Yeah. Oh, she's Starfire in that show? Yeah. Wait, Wait who Titans. is that? Anna Dio. Oh. That's Anna Dio. Oh. <laughs> not she looks very different there. Yeah, because she's not dressed oh, like married? I thought. <laughs> she is on time. <laughs> she's married to Yaya Abdul Mazin in the movie. Oh, I thought you meant in real life. No, 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 no. In the movie. Oh, oh, oh. Like, nigga, what the fuck? Oh no, what kind of weird ass trivia was that? No. <laughs> I'm just trying to make a comic book reference. In oh, this, oh, in this you're category. failing. I'm thinking like they're married in real life, and that's no. actually their daughter. I'm like, oh, no, shit. that's not. No, I was no. like, wow, that is crazy convenient. Yeah, <laughs> Like all everybody in any DC movie or show, they're all married <laughs> to each other, related somehow. Um, so the family goes up to uh, play whack a mole, and the dad is like, "Yeah, I want to play some whack a mole." He's like really excited for playing uh, a game that is one hundred percent rigged, and um, <laughs> and so he wins a thriller T shirt for his daughter at one point, and she's really happy about that. Um, and so the mom is like, "Look, I'm gonna go to the bathroom, watch your daughter." And like the great father that he is, he's like, yeah, I'm watching. And just turns his back to his own kid, which drove me crazy. I was like, just have her come play whack a mole with you so she's in your eyesight. But, you know, whatever. Um, so um, the little girl, she she wanders off. Um, uh, her name is, uh, is it Adelia or Adelaide? Adelaide. Adelaide. What a weird name. Um, so she wanders off because that's what kids do. Um, and she ends up on the beach and she goes into, uh, something called a, a vision quest, uh, building. And, um, this shit looks shady and, uh, I wouldn't go there and I'm 39 years old. I'm not going in there by myself. I'm scared. Um, so she walks in there and it's like a, like a hall of mirrors kind of thing. Right. Um, which now, you know, no, no, I've watched into the dragon. I don't trust it. Like, no, I'd have been, I'd have freaked out. There's like an owl that pops out uh, that she gets scared about. <laughs> she remembers that shit later, um, which is just really funny. Um, so she she eventually makes it into the sort of the Hall of Mirrors, and she ends up seeing a little girl who looks exactly like her. And it just kind of like, oh, and she and then it just kind of cuts. Right. And that's where the movie uh, kind of begins. And we see like we see these rabbits in cages which at the time when I remember seeing this, I was like, I don't know what any of that means. <laughs> right, I don't right, fucking right. get it. Um, I still kind of don't get it, really. Um, but I can take a guess, I guess. Um, are we going to give up the ghost and tell the... the... I mean, you should have seen the movie by now. Right. right. All right. So right. It, much like Get Out. we're going to talk about this. We're like, yeah, it's without... more fun to talk about... Once you know. Yeah. Right, because... Because now we're just like, and then I don't know what happens, guys. What do you think? <laughs> so much like Get Out, we're going to just fucking spoil it. Don't, like, if you haven't seen this movie, see the movie. It is worth seeing. So we're going to spoil it. She, what we find out at the end of the movie is that when she sees that little girl, that little girl turns around and she grabs her by the throat, choking her unconscious and dragging her down to this other world right, yeah. underneath. And basically replacing her with herself, right? Like, I'm I'm going to be the doppelganger. I'm going to pretend to be you. So the names of the characters, so that we don't confuse ourselves. The real, I'll call them the the real world. Um, Adelaide yeah. is her name, and the underworld, the tethered world. The character is Red. Yeah, that is the yeah. character's name. So Adelaide goes into the Hall of Mirrors, like Jay said, and she sees Red. Red chokes her out, chokes out Adelaide, drags Adelaide to her 
you know, underworld right. and and at red replaces Adelaide in the real world. Yeah. Yes. And nobody knows that, right? right? Everybody assumes that Adelaide is 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 the same she's always been. Right. Right. So we cut to present time. Uh, Adelaide, uh, older Adelaide, played by Lupita Nyong'o. She's got her. Um, she's got her family with her. Her husband, uh, played by Winston Duke, um, and uh, uh, named Gabe. Uh, and she's got two kids, uh, Zora and Jason. So again, two uh, or a family, all very dark skin, which is dope. So. They they show up at their vacation house near Santa Cruz Beach, and it's like at this point, it's just like everything is normal. Mm. Like the the older sister argues with the brother. Like the dad is very much a just a dad making dad jokes and everything else, just having a good time. What do you think about the pacing in this first part? Because when I was watching, I was like, wow, they sure are taking a a little bit of extra time to get to. The doppelgangers. I think they get the doppelgangers around 35 minutes. Mm -hmm. Uh, You think that's too long? Normally movies, normally movies try to get, you know, get you going within 20 minutes. Um, I didn't didn't, necessarily feel the, the, like the extended time. Yeah, it didn't, it didn't didn't bother me. Didn't bother me at all. Did it, I mean, it it clearly bothered you. Didn't bother me, but it was like, hmm, it's almost 40 minutes into this movie. (laughs) And we've been setting up. Yeah, I mean, I guess, how long did it, I mean, it took a long time before we got the reveal about all of it in, in Get Out. I mean, that was, that had to been an hour. That was like the last. Yeah, like but that's 40, 40 minutes. minutes but like. everyone was acting weird in Get Out throughout that's most true. of it. Yeah, you're right about that. Whereas nobody was acting weird. There was nothing weird happening until minute 36. When you see the family, when when they see the family in the driveway. Well, we don't know this shit is happening. Weird shit is happening, but like, right. um, But see, but watching it, knowing the 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 ending, the first time watching it, it's like, okay, what the fuck? Right. But watching it, knowing the ending, it's like, yeah, you see, yeah, like you try to you try to pick up on things and you see how this character is reacting. It's actually kind of cool, man. Like this is one of those movies that is better when you rewatch it like mm-hmm. you you find out why Lupita Nyong'o's character is like distant and you know not just like I don't want to go to the beach yo for real like mm, <laughs> but like she acts a certain way well she has a conversation later on with Elizabeth Moss and Elizabeth Moss is like going on and on about the shit at and at the beach and she was like I just don't like talking like like just <laughs> right. like bullshit yeah. talking like right. yeah because like, it's not really your, this is like kind of your second language. You know? Right. It wasn't her thing, man. Like, yeah. she can't, you know. You know. For like the first eight years, I ain't seen nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, just saying. Um, but we and also. And the son is also a little, he's a little quirky. Okay. It, let, let's, let's pause yeah. on that. Because I, I think that's an interesting thing. So there was a theory that the son is also. A tethered. A tethered. And I don't understand in watching it for the second time how that makes sense. I what was the I, rationale? Is, well, he's like in the in the car. He says, "Why don't you kiss my anus?" Yeah, but that was like, just him. That was like him trying to get. Thing. That was him trying to get around swearing. Yeah, yeah. I didn't. And I, he messed up the when you point at somebody, you have three fingers pointing back at you, and like some shit like that. It was a couple of things that he said that were like just off. Mm-hmm. And then when they're in the car, they're trying to like. He couldn't catch the beat. He couldn't catch the beat. I, I mean, got five on it. And neither could she. Like, like yeah. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> She's like, so certain things. And then I, and like, I got five. <laughs> five on it. Gospel, <laughs> gospel <laughs> and then at the end, like, the connection those two so kind of had, like, towards the end. Like, well, the, yeah. I think the and connection. Like, I think that's because, like, yo, you wilding. I, 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 I thought it was because, like, yo, this bitch is crazy. I thought mm-hmm. it was because he was in that locker. He could see there were holes in the locker. He could see and hear everything that was going on. And when we get to the end, like like Lupita Nyong'o's red character is like she gets she gets a little primal. Yeah, she does absolutely. Yeah, and he was like, and I figured that was him. Like, oh shit, what? Yeah. But uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but the sister has that moment too. Yeah, she beats the brakes off that shit. <laughs> yeah, and she's just like, <laughs> the, um, oh, yeah, and with she, the, the uh, golf club. Right. And see, 
I, th- I just he think, doesn't I just have think that. He wasn't. doesn't have. I, I think it's something that gets passed yeah, between like, women. So, like, I think she passed it to her daughter. Whatever the fuck it is in her, hmm. that's what I think. Like, because to me, it doesn't make sense that he would be a tethered. She birthed him. Like, it wasn't like she bur- right, unless she birthed another kid. Well. Like, maybe they're half tethered. Maybe that's what it is. Yeah. Yeah, because well, well, clearly the daughter is. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like, she was, she like, was like, mm. "I'm gonna stab you with the handle of a golf club." <laughs> How the fuck does that work? I was like, "Slow down, you seem unreasonable." <laughs> yeah, um, so there's a lot of weirdness, but yeah. but to your point, Micah, it this is why I enjoyed it the second time because yeah. now you can go, you kind of go, "All right, I know what the ending is. Yeah. Let me see if I can fill in the parts." Yeah, right. And, so it, that's and why, it, yeah, that's why some people were like, "I'm still, I don't know." About the son, I'm trying to figure because he he seemed like just normal, as opposed to <laughs> like he was more like his dad. Yeah, yeah, he seemed like an awkward little kid. Like yeah. I know the two white girls at one point were like, "Your brother's so weird," right? But that's what like older kids say about young kids anyway, right? Yeah, so yeah. and then they and then at the beach, he's like, "I'm building a tunnel and all this other shit." So it's 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 like little clues that people pick up. And I, I again, I'm not a hundred percent. I don't know. Yeah, it's yeah possible, no, yeah. but all right, I I mean, I'll listen to your argument. Like the right, stuff right. you're you're saying makes sense. You well, know what I mean? Well, then, but there's also another part that I think pushes towards that theory which is are the okay the tethered the tethered do the tethered do what the people on top make them do is that my understanding or is it the reverse <laughs> my understanding that's, again that's what it should get mad shaky, shaky man right. like, how long have these people been underground right because like when did they start these experiments and right. why are these people have these tethered right so i i saw it as the people on top the privileged yeah. are forcing a life that these these, that these the forgotten people, people all, this life onto them that they don't want right because there's a whole line and we'll get to it but there's a whole line that red talks about like you married winston duke's character so i was forced to marry to, abraham. to ma- marry abraham right? right so they're forced to do what the rich people want them to do basically right but if that's true if that is true, then the little boy can't be tethered because he forced, he forced his doppelganger to kill himself. Yeah. yeah, He controlled him to do it. That's why when people brought that up, I was like, but this is a big scene in the movie of him controlling that kid. That wouldn't make sense right. the other way around. Right. So I, I don't know. And I'm not, yeah. again, I'm not even saying that that theory is wrong. It's just, it's, it's an curious. interesting theory. It's an interesting theory, right? Um, much like most of the theories in, in Get Out, like, even if I didn't agree with that, I was like, okay, that's kind of an interesting take. Like, but this movie, I think, if it, if this had come out before Get Out, I think this would have gotten just as much crazy praise because people would have seen it over and over and over and over again. Yeah. And that's what gets that kind of water cooler talk going yeah. that makes people start formulating theories and all this other shit. And I think people saw this. They were like, this isn't get out. I'm, I'm over it. But like, watch it again. If you've only seen it once, <laughs> I, I think you will be surprised. Um, so th- during this whole time where they're, you know, they're just kind of hanging around the house. Um, again, it's just like, this is like just regular black family shit. Like at one point, Lupita Nyong'o is like, she goes up to her daughter, "Have you seen your brother?" And she's just like on the phone. And she's like, "No, I haven't seen him." Like, I don't really give a fuck. <laughs> like, they're just brother and sister, and it just really doesn't matter. Also, I, I enjoyed the fact that she was a, a young black girl, and her hair didn't look a mess on. T- in, in the movie. I just I appreciated that, <laughs> and thank you to whoever did it. That's great. She looks nice. Um, so then we see uh, uh, Lupita Nyong'o's character, like. She's looking around. She finds at one point a bunny, like a stuffed bunny, um, and she kind of gives it this like longing look. and And she's she's just generally fucking weird. And she starts to see the. I guess the bunny represents some sort. That represents the whole tethered conversation, right? Like the bunnies are part of the science experiments. I guess probably mm-hmm. yeah, because yeah, you would use a a, a rabbit to. Experiment on them before you would a human or something, right? And you can make a bunch of rabbits very quickly because yeah. they just like the fuck. and they ate rabbit and they ate rabbit raw, <sighs> they which them, like, probably yeah. would cause mass disease. <laughs> <But> <laughs> that whole tethered well, situation I mean, kind of <laughs> figures itself out. At that point. <laughs> what happened to them? Well, like, well, I mean, if that's all you've eaten, like your stomach, you know? Yeah, you. I guess you evolve, right? Yeah, you evolve. <laughs> I can just eat raw fucking meat. 
At nah, this point, whatever. You're a savage. <laughs> no, no thing. <laughs> I mean, they were. <laughs> yeah, they were. Absolutely. Um, so then we see we we see a whole scene of like while they're while they're um, hanging out around the house. She, Lupita Nyong'o's character, sees um, like kind of in her mind's eye herself dancing as a little girl and like doing ballet, right? Which becomes very uh, a very big deal later on. Uh, they hear all this noise outside. They go outside, and Winston Duke is just in his fucking dad bag. Um, this nigga has bought a shitty boat called the Craw Daddy. <laughs> Yo, I love his character in this movie. I really do. Um, and he's just like he's just like he just bought like this shitty boat, and he's like, "Yo, I got a deal on this shit. It's dope. Come on, get in the boat." And he don't know how to drive it. Yeah, right. shit <laughs> fucking makes a left turn. Right <laughs> turns left. Like, like, uh, he was like, hold on. I'm good. Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna fucking die. Yeah, I don't need to be on the craw, dad. Um, and so it's just, it's, it's kind of a fun, light moment, right? And I always enjoy when horror movies do this, right? Like, give you a little bit of, you know, a little bit of levity before shit gets, fucking goes left. Um, and again, you know, the, the boat will come back into, into play later on. Um, they're driving to the beach, even though Lupita Nyong'o's character does not want to go to the beach right. because, spoiler alert, that's, you know, she's desperately afraid that she's going to run into her doppelganger, right? Because what she did to her doppelganger years ago. Um, this is the scene where you see her trying to uh, terribly get on beat um, to I got five on it. She got three on it. Like she, ain't, <laughs> she don't know what she's doing. She ain't never heard that song before. Um, like she was bobbing her head on beat, but then she started snapping. I'm like, what the fuck are you? Okay, you know what? Just stopped. She was like, I was raised by a white tethered family for the first she eight years. Snapping on the one, <laughs> two, three, four, and five. Like, what? I got it, guys. You don't got it. Um, and everybody is cool. And I'm just noticing, like, watching it, watching the scene again. The daughter is kind of like, she's like, yeah. And the daughter's like, what? <laughs> what the fuck? Like, Did you way <laughs> off? I was like, hey, Ma, knock it off. She's like, this I is did. not cool. Yeah. And this is where you get that line. It was like, is this song about drugs? No, the song is not about drugs. Don't do drugs. Um, I Look, I like Winston Duke. I think he is, I think he's got good to me, comedic right. timing. He went from fucking M'Baku to this. So right. you, the dude has range. Yeah, like, this, is right his, off, this is his second fucking movie. Yeah. He he feels like he feels like kind of a, a guy who's got like his star is going to rise pretty yeah. well, and, and that's that's kind of dope to see. Um, but le- I mean, let's talk about the the dad aspect of this. Like so, he's a, reg- a regular fucking dude. Yeah, he's a regular dude. He's playing a regular dude. Like that's what the character calls for. But I think because we are so conditioned that men are supposed to be the heroes in these stories, and they're supposed to be the protector and provider and all right. that. That um, and, and the fact that he's like six four, right? Yeah, that's a big ass dude. Huge, huge <laughs> dude, yo. Like when that one scene where he was sitting in that bed, nigga, that scene <laughs> had me rolling, yo. <laughs> but um, yeah, he much like uh, in the last episode, like, yeah, he, trying he, was trying to, yeah, he was trying to make something happen. Trying to make some shit happen, man. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, there ain't no room for this like this poor woman twin. in this bed. <laughs> and he had a fucking college extra long twin. <laughs> Um, Should but, um, I saw some comments from, um, uh, you know, I'll just say it, fucking black dude, yo. Black oh, dude. that's funny. I did. All the ones I saw were from black women. That's interesting. Really? Yeah. That's wild. Oh, uh, that is. Yeah. That's very wild to me. Yeah, well, you know, oh, well, no, you it's know, not that it's wild. It's not that wild. It's not, it's not that, wild. that wild to yeah. me as I look at my Bible app. Um, <laughs> They're um <laughs> they were Jeremiah eleven eleven. Yeah. Right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they um they were a little upset because, you know, Winston Duke, he, he wasn't he wasn't the one to save the day. He was he they I saw one comment it was like well he was acting like a real bitch in the movie, yo. And I'm like um, well, nigga, what would you do? Right. Yeah, what would you do? <laughs> like, what? You know, if I saw huh? a doppelganger who was like way stronger than that, nigga, I'd be like, yo, we gotta get the fuck out of here. <laughs> this nigga shredded. 
Like, come on, dude. I'm not fighting another six four dude. I don't care if I am six four. I'm a big dude. Man. Right. And and go. And they even do a kill count check in the movie. They even yeah. go, I killed two. <laughs> I killed two <laughs> by myself. So fuck all y'all. Yeah. I got a busted knee. So they hit me with a baseball bat. Yeah, you fucked his knee all the way. I, like, I got damn. I got damn a middle linebacker and hit me with a bat, yo. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? And I still killed him and the other dude. Who was also not a small guy, by the right, way. Right. So yeah, uh, put some respect on my name, goddammit. So I don't dead. understand I don't understand um I don't understand people. But I I, I didn't understand where that yes. where that criticism came from. The only thing I could think of was uh, you know, sexism, right? But that's what but that's what it is, right? It, it but it well I shouldn't say that's the only thing it is. It's sexism and it's a it's a little a little sprinkle of racism in there, right? Like the big buck, yeah, you know, like kind of the big monkey man. I, right. I had that big monkey motherfucker fucking <laughs> take out the other big monkey man. Right, like he should be able to easily <laughs> beat these people because he's right, a large he's black larger man. than them. Right, like, but the whole point of the movie is that that's they, an unbalanced fighting game, is what that is. <laughs> <laughs> beat the brakes yeah. off of small children. <laughs> um, but the reality is. He is a regular person, and again, this is this is watching the movie. Like that criticism, I, I wouldn't say it makes sense, but I can understand where that criticism comes in watching the movie the first time. When you know what happens and watch it the second time, it makes all the sense in the world that he is not the person to like go off and like put in work in like massive violence right. because he wasn't raised in that world. Right. She was right. She was like, raised in a brutal fucking society of just like, just being forced into life, and and he was like, mm, he from that, he from, like, I'm from the suburbs. Yeah, like, <laughs> like I went to Howard. I don't know if you've seen the shirt, but, <laughs> yeah. but like, yeah, and Lapina Nyong'o's like, nah, I if you want to get crazy. We can we get crazy, it. nigga. Shut, <laughs> shut up. He was trying so hard shut to be intimidating. <laughs> I loved it. it was but so that funny. was, but that was the point, right? Like, because right. because that, that's, like, that's like me going, like, all right, guys, if you want to go, we can go. I'm gonna go, <laughs> right. but yo, know, we can go. <laughs> we can all go home. Right, yeah. We can fucking go our separate fucking way. Because I'm scared. I don't want to have to I don't fight want to anybody, fight, guys. Yeah. Which is 99 percent of people. People talk a yeah, lot of bullshit. Like, like people talk a lot of bullshit. You're right, man. Yeah. But look, when push comes to shove, everybody's like that scene in Fight Club. Yeah. Yeah, when they're spraying you with water, they're like, Like, you better stop. (laughs) That's one of my favorite fucking scenes. It's hard to get people to fight. Like, you can't get someone to fight unless them niggas want to fight. Right. And most people did not want to fight. It's because the shit is tiring, yo. It's It's just tiring. And and nobody wants to get punched in the face, even though everyone should at some point. Again, I've been punched in the face multiple times. Yeah, the shit is not hurt, man. Yeah, nobody. Yeah. No one wants that unless you're a boxer for some reason. I don't understand boxing at all. Yeah, because you've gotten your bell rung enough times, your brain stopped functioning and say, run, nigga. That's why. No, not at all. Yeah, he was like, nah, I don't want to fight. But yeah. if I have to, okay, right. so be it. Right. Right. And that's that yeah, that's is like that's that's what your brain should say. That's right. what the that's, that's a what human whole, experience. Yeah. That's what the whole protecting and providing Bible people, like that's what that shit means, right? Yeah, like if somebody just haul off and get into a fight for no reason. Four right. people standing outside your fucking door with it look like you. You're not ready to fight off rip. You're like, yo, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> right, like, I don't nigga, trust none of this. We're, nigga, I'm start the, the car up. <laughs> right. We gotta go. Like, I'm gonna grab a bat. I'd have told my daughter to grab a knife. Fuck that. Yeah, yeah a bat. You hold the bat. I'm going to stab them. They go down. <laughs> you hit them with the bat. No, I'm not using a blunt object to start. I'm using a stabbing object to start. Let's get this out of the way right away. No, but I, I, but I appreciated that they showed him as a regular guy. Yeah. Like he, yo, he is just not from this brutal world. Yeah. She was like, "Oh, we about to kill people? Oh, rock and roll, let's, let's do this!" Like, yeah, they're just a very different person. And that's normally how, like, you know, I don't know why people would, like discount women. Like, yo, when it comes to family and shit like that, yo, women live close. Women, are the, oh, women are the most violent <laughs> human beings. You ever seen two women fight? In the yeah, they don't. You, fight you better they get don't fight fair at all. Oh no, they grab each other's head. I saw a woman rip an eyebrow ring 
out of another world. Yeah, that's disturbing. In yeah. a target. Look, 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 nigga. look, look, niggas won't even do shit. Like, yo, 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 <laughs> yo, <laughs> yo. All right, we can punch each other. Yo, I got an earring. Yo, be careful, my nigga. Like, don't be in the nuts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got like, right. Like, 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 rules. There's like unwritten rules <laughs> of fucking fighting. With like, niggas. come on. Like, yeah. women, they don't give a fuck. They don't give a damn. They'll pick up whatever. Yeah. Like, throw this goddamn vase at you. Yeah, look, now I'm not saying, look, Women not will not necessarily win a fight next to a guy, right? Like if they are physically different in size. Yeah. But don't discount women's ability to unload the levels of violence <laughs> in, a, in a situation to protect their family. Yeah, yeah. shit, you you must be crazy. You might not have read any of those stories about women having adrenaline rushes and lifting a car off of a kid. Yeah, yeah they that's will flip nice. out. You know? Like no, those are our kids. You lucky, look, you lucky she ain't killed a husband just to make sure. Like, I don't know if you tethered, nigga. You gotta go, too. So, yeah, I, look, I get it. But, yeah, Winston Tuke, I, I thought his character is portrayed properly. Like, and yeah. even the kids. Like, the kids don't want to do anything until, like, they are pushed to the absolute. They're like, all right, all right. Yeah, they don't want The son didn't want to fucking, he yeah. didn't want to hurt anybody until he saw some money on his mom. <laughs> And which, like, which is the most sun thing of all time. Yeah, hey, yo. Hey, don't fuck with my mom, yo. Yeah. I'll kill you, nigga. Like, <laughs> yeah. I'll kick you off a podcast, nigga. Yeah. <laughs> don't mention my mother. Just like, don't. Don't fuck around. I don't play that shit. I don't play it. It's oh, not okay. Oh, can we be friends? No. Uh, Never again. Um, eat a dick. Um, <laughs> you, know what? you know what? No. I was going to go further, but that's rude. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, um, no, it's not really a threat if that's what you want. Anyway, um, so <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a dick. I'm a dick. I'm a dick. I'm a dick. Yeah, yeah. I'm, a dick. Right. I'm a dick. I'm a dick. All right. <laughs> so they head to Santa Cruz Beach. Oh, shit. And again, Lupita Nyong'o's character is, uh, she's very weary of the beach because of her history there. Uh, I like how they changed, um, they changed the vision quest to Merlin's Forest. <laughs> and it still has the find yourself thing, which is, again, like, it's right in your face, right? Like, right. there you go. Find yourself. Yourself is fucking in here in the basement. <laughs> like, it's not that hard. Um, so she she's very reluctant and she's being weird. Um, and the rest of her family is like, yeah, everything's great. It's the beach. And she's just like, eh, I don't care for any of this. Um, so they get they get there and they meet up with uh, Elizabeth Moss and um, her husband's uh, characters, um, uh, Kitty and Josh. I don't like the name Kitty. It's <laughs> awful. It's an awful name. Um, so they get there and they're hanging out and. Um, Gabe is talking to Josh, and 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 Kitty's talking to um, uh, Adeline. Is that the name? God, the name is so Adelaide. Weird. Adelaide. Thank you. <laughs> it's a really hard name for me to remember. Um, and this is a scene where Kitty is like, "Hey, like I'm talking about your bullshit." And she's trying to small talk, and Adelaide is like, "I don't really like talking because, again, it's not really her thing because she was a mute." For eight years, yeah. right? Well, technically, this is red, but yeah, or Adelaide. red, right? But red was you know playing Adelaide, which yeah. is going to refer to her as Adelaide until we have scenes with the two of them together, right? Um, this is yeah, this is uh, pre-red Adelaide, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's very difficult. Um, so, so they have lunch or whatever, and at one point, um, the little boy goes missing. Um, Jason goes missing. And they find him uh, uh, walking down the beach, and he just he sees uh, this homeless man uh, with um, just standing, just standing there with his hands out. Um, and that's when his mom um, fi- figures out that he's gone missing, and she's like running around the beach, and she's freaking out because she's probably afraid that his doppelganger right. is going to fucking scoop his ass up um, and shit will start all over again. So she was like, oh, I don't trust them motherfuckers down there. They're my peoples. And uh, so she runs off and she eventually finds him. He, he's just, Jason's like, oh, I was just, you know, just like every other oblivious little kid when their parents are freaking out. They're just like, what's the big deal? I'm just walking <laughs> alone on a beach. It's not like kids get snatched up all around the world. No big deal. And so at this point, Adelaide is uh, pretty freaked out. And so they, she's like, we're leaving the beach right now um there was a scene real quick uh where somebody was playing frisbee and the frisbee lands on the right. on the um blanket i don't i didn't get it 
I, mean, I don't understand what it meant. I thought that was in reference to the whack a mold that her dad was playing, maybe. How it landed on the specific thing. I, I landed thought, perfectly on the circle. Yeah. I was like, okay. Yeah. What the fuck does that mean? <laughs> we got to call Jordan Peele. Uh. Like this movie, I'd really love for him to do a commentary track and just be like, that's what this means. Like, that's, you know what I mean? Like, that would Have actually be. done it? Do they still do commentary? On they do. Yeah, I don't do. buy DVDs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they do. Okay. Yeah, that's something that needs to come to streaming because you know I'm not buying yeah, the DVDs. I, that's crazy. Like, I'm renting all. Sometimes those. they do. Sometimes they're they have tracks in like iTunes extras and all that shit. Oh, they do. Mm, yeah. Okay, sometimes. Yeah, like Netflix and stuff should probably Netflix add that. should. Yeah, Netflix would. I mean, it would be great. I, there was a time that's all I did was listen to DVD commentary. Yeah, I used to do that a lot too. I always found that interesting. Yeah, like for the one for Armageddon. <laughs> I did that for Fight Club. I watched the movie and then watched it again right after with the commentary on it. Yeah. It's always it's always good when it when the actors really, like really give a shit or the directors really give a fuck about their performances. Um and something like this that's got so many hidden things, it'd be it'd be kinda nice. Um yeah, this is a scene where Winston Duke is desperately trying to make something happen. <laughs> like in his big ass in that tiny child's bed. Um and so uh she's like, Look, I'm not gonna fuck you. Relax. <laughs> Um, and he gets sad about it because it's Lupita Nyong'o and I understand dog. Um, then, uh, late, later that night, four randos show up. <laughs> um, and this is the part where Jay gasses up the car and gets the fuck out of town. Right before that, uh, you know, Lupita Nyong'o's character is bearing her soul to her husband. She was like, I went in here and I went to the house of mirrors and I saw a little girl look just like me. And Winston Duke is like... But you were in the house of mirrors. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what you, why? What are you crying about? Like, relax. And he was like, no, it was a different little girl. He was like, well, don't worry, honey. You're pretty small. I think I could take you. <laughs> you're like, right. So I could probably take that other girl, too. He was like, right. oh. <laughs> no, you're not laughing. So I'm going to beat a woman, nigga? <laughs> <laughs> if you guys want to get crazy. Inappropriate. <laughs> Yo, he just... He was so awkward. He's so know? awkward <laughs> in moments. He's just like, oh. We're not joking anymore? Oh. Uh. Oh, shit. I, I, I love how, like, there was an earlier scene where... She, I, or it might actually be this scene where she's like, you know, she's explaining everything. And he's like... The little girl? You scared of a little girl in a beer? Like, <laughs> is this that big of a deal? Like, like you said, like I'll fuck that little girl up. <laughs> See how big I am, and I'm a coward. Um, so so they start hearing uh, noise outside, and they look outside, and they're like, "Yo, these motherfuckers look like us." Um, and they uh, Gabe goes outside, and he's like, uh, "If you could please leave my property, that'd be great." <laughs> Uh, which is, you know, that's the Jerry Seinfeld move. You gotta, you gotta look him in the eye, say it. You gotta give him an eye roll. Anything more than that, you're risking a punch in the face. <laughs> um, so the, he's like, all right, I'm gonna go inside now and call the police like a citizen. And they're just standing there, uh, holding hands. And so then he comes back out after getting his wife to call the police. He comes back out. And um, he's got a bat. And now this is um, Micah doing his bullshit. Um, <laughs> fucking Michael you Keaton. Go, bro? <laughs> That's just like Michael Keaton. You, you know, let's get nuts. <laughs> Come on. Dink. Let's get nuts. <laughs> yeah. And then his doppelganger, Abraham, just walks down down the hill. And he was like, oh, shit. And he just walked right oh, down. Yeah. He was like, fuck. <laughs> the thing that made that shit wild is that you could tell, like, like the mother said something. And then the kids fucking scatter yeah. right. to do some fucking flanking <laughs> raptor shit. Yeah. It's like, nah, yo. And then this, here comes this big motherfucker. And it's like, like nah, nope. In the house. Here we go. They're coming from all sides, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Hunker down. We all going back. The bat didn't work, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. My intimidation factor did nothing. Yeah, you see the kids scaling the trees to get up on the roof. I'm like, yo, <laughs> oh, hell no. And, of course, Winston Duke's character is like yelling shit through the door. You might not come in here. You might not. <laughs> I'm going to fuck you up if you come in here. Yeah. So they start seeing the kids running around outside. Yeah, I would. Mm -mm. Nah, yo. But look, that, this be me. I'd have a RX 9000 aluminum bat. I'd be ready to, <laughs> ready to rock and roll. Um, and then eventually, like, they they just find the fucking hide a key because they think like them. And they were like, yeah. Think like them. That. that is her. She know that shit. Oh, yeah. That's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Um, 
And she was like, yeah, thanks for hiding, key, dum-dum. And then they just fucking come right on in. Um, and what's dope about this is it is a terrifying scene to, like, push them all into the house. And then they, like, don't try to kill them. They're just like, we're just going to stand here for a bit and just fuck with you. Um, yeah. Which I enjoyed. And this is, like, the first time we hear Red um, or real Adelaide. Um, we'll go with proto-Red. Um <laughs> Uh, she, she speaks for the first time and she has a voice like this, um, which some people apparently had, yeah, had issues with it. Issues I'm like, with? People, um, again, people, people write people, fucking think pieces about every fucking thing. The Pity Nyong'o based Red's voice on Robert F. Kennedy Jr. and specifically the spasmodic dysphonia, uh, that he suffers from. Okay. So apparently it's a real disease. People with it really talk like that and people got mad. Is that the same thing like Diane Reems has? Um, oh, from uh, MPR. Yeah, I don't Yeah, I don't she know. had like this shaky kind of voice that made her sound like she was way older than she was. Mm-hmm. Uh, I actually know a woman. Uh, my mom's best friend has that. Like all of a sudden, it just like developed over time. That's wild. Yeah. I don't, I don't know what causes it, but... Yeah, she has like uh, like kind of that way of speaking, but she's like my mom's age. Like she's yeah, not like she, Diane Reem does have it. Yeah, okay, so it's a, yeah, it's the same thing. Um, now this woman's voice is Lapita Nyong'o or Red's voice is a little bit more like gravelly sound, or you know, it's a little more raspy. Yeah, that's a better word. Um, and so you kind of start to. Like, one thing I liked is they don't hide that they're doppelgangers. Like, once they show up, it's just like, it's right in your face. And you're just kind of like, what the fuck is going on? Um, Which was an interesting take. Um, You don't generally see the monster that soon. Like, you know, the monster's always kind of hidden behind things for a while. And then it's like a big reveal. Um, And they're basically telling them, like, you know, We've been ignored for all this time, so you know now is our time, kind of thing. And they're just like, I don't know what any of the fuck that shit means. <laughs> um, and yeah, it's just weird. And like Abraham takes Winston Duke's glasses at one point because he's right. he's just he's enamored by him. He just takes the bat right out of his hand. Like you're not gonna do anything <laughs> with that. Um, and it's just this weird situation. And then they like uh, Abraham just grabs. Winston and just starts dragging his ass like no you coming with me I'm gonna kill you um the daughter runs away uh they she's like a track star so they tell her to just run you know just try to get help and yeah the 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 fucking doppelganger was like run and she was like uh hmm? okay okay yeah <laughs> but I'm fast like, I don't know if you know he tells her fucking tell the daughter to sick her and shit like, yeah oh, all right. and then we have the tethered son but he's wearing a mask yeah. Um, which is uh, disturbing in its own right. Uh, right. Um, the the kid in the mask and uh, his you know real world doppelganger Jason, Jason and what the hell is his name? Uh, Pluto. Pluto. Yeah. Pluto. Um, they go and they quote unquote go play <laughs> is which would uh, is what Red says. Um, meanwhile, Abraham is uh, planning to uh, kill. Uh, Gabe, he luckily doesn't stab him. He just punches him in the face. Thanks for that. Um, and yeah, Jason and this kid, they start playing um, in the closet. Gabe, or excuse me, uh, Jason is wearing a, like a little monkey mask, which is offensive uh, as a black child. Um, and he puts the mask down and he eventually raises it. And then Pluto raises his mask that he's right. had on the whole time. And his mouth is burned. Any idea why? Any, um, any speculation? She said... Uh, Something happened said, the year before. Uh-huh. Something happened in the house the year before. Like he was, he couldn't get this magic trick to work. Like throughout the whole movie, he couldn't get this magic trick to work. And yeah. apparently, something happened. And the tethered one did get it to work, or something like that. Like yeah. the tethered oh, okay, one liked playing with fire, and the tethered one burned. And I guess since mm. the tethered do whatever the ones up, above upstairs do, does, like I upstairs, guess, <laughs> <laughs> the people upstairs. <laughs> I guess whatever. The, since they do whatever the ones upstairs does, when he did the trick last year and it worked. Yeah. I guess it fucked his face up. Oh, yeah. And in, in the tunnels. Yeah, okay. So I, I forgot about that. Um, then we catch up with um, the daughter, Zora, as she's running away uh, from uh, Umbre, uh, Red Zora, let's go with. And uh, yeah, so at one point, uh, Red Zora's on top of somebody's car, 
And a yeah. white man decides not to mind his own fucking business. <laughs> I mean, that's his car, though. But again, <laughs> this crazy girl standing on top of your car, just let it slide. And he comes out, and he's like, yo, get the nah, fuck I mean, like, off my the Cadillac. Fuck off my car, yeah. That's, nah, I'm not going to. No, I, I I'm agree not with you. my business. Get off my motherfucking <laughs> that car. That is my business. Yeah. It's my car. <laughs> That white man was like, yo, I paid a lot of money for that Cadillac. Get your ass up off of that. Right. And then <laughs> she stabs him in his fucking ankle. Yeah, she was like, oh, uh-huh. Yeah, no, come on over here for a second. Let me holler at you. And uh, she was like, yeah, you good? He was like, fuck your Achilles, nigga. You're done. <laughs> um, and meanwhile, um, uh, Zora's like, and that's my uh, that's my cue to run the fuck out of here. <laughs> and she does. So you've got, <coughs> excuse me. You've got red... And you've got uh, Adelaide um, sitting face to face. And, you know, she's basically like, look, like you are the reason that I'm I'm where I am. And I had to be forced to marry this guy. I had to, you know, I had to live, live my life. She said and that she smashes her face. You had the table. a baby. It was a girl and she was beautiful. I had a baby. It was a girl and it's a monster. <laughs> and you had a boy. And and I had a boy, and I had to have it. You know, fucking, you had to have it removed from you. I had to remove it myself. Like essentially, that she had to give herself her own C section yeah, to please. remove the baby. God damn, nigga. Is that is I guess in this world is that why women die in childbirth? Is like. Like, how does that work? Like, if you can't cut the kid out, like, is there a connection going back the other way? Or is it only a one connection? Yeah, because no one else is, like, bright enough. Yeah, no one else is smart enough to do it. Yeah, yeah, she got snatched up. So she can technically, I mean, she got snatched up at, like, seven or eight. Yeah. (laughs) So. (laughs) She don't know what the fuck a C-section is. Yeah. (laughs) Like, bitch, I didn't see a C-section video before I went down. She had books or nothing. (laughs) She had two kids. Yeah. Well, I think I think they have no control over it, right? Like again, this is part of that shaky, yeah. you know. Like I had to marry him because you did. You I had to have married. this child, and I had to have it via C-section because you had it via C-section. Right. So who cut her open to have the C-section? But she says she She's did like, oh, with a pair of fucking golden scissors. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, back up. like <laughs> nigga, <good> what? Lord. <laughs> Yo, the tether people, you know what? They got a lot of good points, man. Like, <laughs> it like sucks that, down there. As a person that has seen a C-section, how, how the fuck? How? <laughs> <laughs> right. No, thank you. Like, where do where other kids come from in the in the, in the tether world? I mean, I guess if the if the uh, regular world mother had the baby, however that mother had the baby, that's how the tethered person has the baby does that does that include like like okay so all right she this is a weird <laughs> oh shoot okay like so she had the c-section like did she just develop like her stomach just starts getting cut open because it's happening upstairs i i don't know jordan Peele, Again, if is... you're listening and we <laughs> yeah. know that you are please come on the show we live in baltimore you can just come on um it would be a really super interesting conversation to have yeah um like tell me all of the answers to this. So yeah, it's it's uh, super fascinating. Um, yeah, so Red basically explains like yeah, I call this the untethering, and she fucking smashes her face yeah. against the table, and you watch it crack the glass table. That was a dope scene. I actually yeah, really enjoyed that. That looks I'm very painful. Fucking, fucking pressure, man. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> and she's doing that shit like kind of with one hand, which is wild. Um, we see uh, Gabe has been uh, he's been fighting Abraham on a boat. Uh, they both fall off the boat, and um, Gabe tries to like swim back to shore. Red finds that same bunny from earlier uh, and cuts the head off, uh, thus symbolizing like that sort of detachment from being tethered to uh, Adelaide, um, or vice versa. However you want to look at it. Um, Gabe ends up. Killing uh, Abraham on a boat by pushing his ass into the engine of the boat, which is a pretty solid kill. I enjoyed it. I'm here for it. <laughs> um, the kids eventually make it back, or or Jason makes it to his mom um, as he like dipped out of that closet and right. <laughs> left um, uh, Pluto in there. He was just like kicked that little toy out. He was like yeet and was <laughs> out of there. Um, of course, that little monkey boy was stuck in there. Good, fuck him. 
uh, the kids, including uh, the two kids, and uh, Adelaide make it to Gabe on the boat. And they take the boat and they get the fuck out of there. And they head over to Kitty and Josh's house. Um, and these two miserable pieces of shit sitting there getting drunk in the middle of the day or the middle of the evening. Um, Josh don't even want to get off his couch. He's like, can you uh, check outside? And he was like, mm, I think everything's fine. I'm a coward, but I'm also drunk. So, no. He's like, can you please check? Because I'm scared. Just be scared. Yeah. I'm like, no. I don't think that's right. Why don't you go out there? I'm like, you scared? I ain't scared. You go outside. <laughs> that's how the modern world works, right? Um, then uh, we see they're like playing Beach Boys or something, and their doppelgangers come out and just straight up murder them. Uh, which is pretty cool because the doppelganger doppelganger daughters just straight up fucking killed those girls. Yeah, like God damn, <laughs> All right, like, yeah, okay. I wasn't wait. I wasn't expecting that. Um, and so yeah, it's their their red version. So the two twin daughters who look wild as shit, and uh, they look like a grown up version of the kids from The Shining. Um, and they're all there, and they're like, yeah, everything everything's great. Killing people's awesome. Meanwhile, like, fuck the police is playing on on the fake Alexa. Yeah, so they have a fake Alexa called Ophelia. Yeah. And uh, while the mother is dying, Ophelia, she's like, Ophelia, call, it's, it's, you know, she's she's got fucking stab wounds all over the place. She's like, Ophelia, call the police. And Ophelia's like, playing fuck the police by N.W.A. <laughs> <laughs> That was really great. I thought that was fun. Which I, I think there's some sort of commentary there, right? Because, you know, the uh, the black family called said, called the cops and the cops said, yeah, it'll be 15, 15 minutes, minutes before it. we get there. Nigga. What the fuck? In an emergency? Is somebody trying to murder me. All right, all right, all right. Give it half the length of a Seinfeld episode <laughs> and we'll be there. Yeah. And Are they outside? <laughs> Keep the yes, door locked. they are. Oh, uh, so I got to. Okay, cool. And um, fuck me, right? And then for this one to yeah. be like, tell them to tell them to call the cops, and then just like fuck the police. Yep. I don't know. Nine eleven or nine one one's a joke, right? I believe that was a song back in the day. Um, so the uh, the Wilson family gets to uh, J- Josh and Kitty's house. Um, Adelaide uh, knocks on the door, and uh, Josh comes to the door, and he's like, just smiling. It's like, oh shit, this is not a real Josh. And she just hit that nigga in the head with a fucking <laughs> fire poker from a uh, fireplace. It's like, pow. Doesn't kill him. Um, and then he starts to try to attack them. And he ends up fighting with Gabe. Um, Gabe leads him away uh, so he can try to murder him. Uh, the two kids are in, in Josh and Kitty's house and they're kind of looking do you around. Think, do you think that she instantly recognizes tethered people? Who? Uh, Adelaide? Adelaide? Adelaide. Yes. Adelaide. Yeah. Oh. Proto, uh, uh, pre-red Adelaide. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I think she does. Yeah. I, I was just curious because um, I, I always, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if they can see their own kind hmm. outside of just I mean, like. Well, she noticed, the, she noticed the, you know. the, oh, god damn, she hit that nigga directly in the forehead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, she, well, she saw the jumpsuit. Yeah. So. Yeah, like, I'm not buying it. Nobody wears this shit. Get out of here. Fuckers wearing a red jumpsuit <laughs> and a bathrobe. <laughs> <laughs> now, this, is how I, this is how I dress all the time. Um, kids are in the house. Uh, they see um, they see the uh, the doppelgangers uh, of the twins, twin girls up there. Doing cartwheels and shit. Yeah, having a great time. And so um, Zora's <laughs> like, look, uh, Got to kill somebody eventually. And so she just takes a fucking golf club and just beats the brakes off of this, um, off of this, uh, this woman. What you using, a putter or a driver? She's using a putter. She's using a putter. Now you need a driver, man. I figured you would need a, you would need a, the driver's so wait, got some heft on the end of the end of <laughs> And you only get one swing, really. Because right. once you hit somebody, that thing is bent. Like yeah. that's a, that is a wrap. <laughs> 
But a putter is shorter. So uh, yeah, it's, it's shorter. So, so you like, got a, it. Mm-hmm. like a driver would probably be like a broadsword for that shot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's a little she girl. Had the, she had to hold the shit with two hands. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, she's got a fucking. She's got. She doesn't even have a putter. She's got like a mini golf <laughs> right. putter, right? Like yeah, you know, like a tiny one. Um, and she proceeds to kill one of the twins. And this is the scene where you kind of see her have that little like craziness, yeah, yeah. And, and it's like, huh. Oh, I don't know. I feel like you might be a little crazy. Um, we we literally see Elizabeth Moss's uh, doppelganger putting on makeup because she's probably thinking, wow, this is what I could have been doing all these years instead of living in a fucking uh, subway tunnel. <laughs> yeah, I think that's exactly what's going on here. It's mm-hmm. like, I mean, think about it again from the class aspect, right? Like, this is essentially a... I don't know, this is going to sound mean, but this is essentially a homeless person, right? Yeah. Being given, like, a chance to be pretty or whatever, to make herself up, to clean like, oh, what is this? Wow, like, this is what it's like to... Yeah, it's how the other side looks. Yeah. Right. I, You know, I actually saw the movie as, um... <laughs> by the way, the name of Josh and Kitty's boat is Be Yachting. <laughs> <laughs> I just noticed that. <laughs> um... But God, that's obnoxious. Um, but I, I also saw the movie as like the Wilson family and everybody else who was like the normal, you know, upstairs dwellers. It's kind of like they're all they're all white people suffering from white privilege. Like they don't see they're completely any completely oblivious. They're to completely else, oblivious yeah. to everything else that's happening. Like there's an entire world of people that yeah. are marginalized and treated like ours. They're like. <laughs> We be yachting. Like, they just don't see any of it, right? So, in a way, yes, I think it is about social class and stuff like that. But it is, it's just about how we completely ignore people who are not at our eye level, right? Yeah. Like, so. If anything, we try to, we try to jump up to the people, the people that are our level, right? Like, it's obvious the white people are a little more. Right, mm-hmm. because of the wealth, the fact that they have a yacht, the fact that they have this really th- this better looking home, yeah, like which and, is their vacation home, by the way, right? <laughs> yeah, to keep right. that in mind, right? And and you know, Winston Duke's character is so proud of this fucking piece of shit boat. Yeah, it's obvious the niggas got boat envy, right? Like because yeah. yeah, he, he's just driving a crawdaddy. He's driving a crawdaddy. He want to be yachting like the fucking white guy. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so there's, so yeah, look at this shit. <laughs> oh, it's B. Yach. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, oh that's, that's even, even worse. worse. <laughs> wow. These white people are annoying. Yeah, he's got the, the B. Yach. By the way, that's not a yacht. Like, no. it's not, a, that's not even a yacht. What <laughs> the fuck? Yacht, but... It's a nice boat. It's not a yacht. But then they've got their, like, the craw daddy right, next to it. Right. Like, right. like he's, he's obviously got boat envy. Yeah. It's like, you know, black, raw, and, you know, and like whatever white people watch. <laughs> I'm just kind of saying. Um, so, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, so Elizabeth Moss is like her version, her red version is like enjoying all of these sort of niceties, you know, of, of what life is like on the, on the, uh, on the upswing, right? Yeah. And that is the point of, of the movie. And I think there's also a whole thing of, the tethered aren't really allowed to kill people that aren't their doppelgangers. Yeah, that's what I thought. In um, that's what I thought when they first started. You know, in the in this in the Tyler household, right? Like, because it doesn't look like uh, Dyla wants to kill Adelaide's character, right? But in the going on, I think that you know. They're like, whatever, yo. Like, we gotta kill these motherfuckers. Yeah, these motherfuckers attack me. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna attack them. I'll make it up to red later. <laughs> yeah, but I, I did think that was kind of interesting of like, you kill your own. You're like, you're only allowed to kill your own. Yeah. Um, which makes sense, right? Like, the idea of like, you wanting to replace them. Again, yeah. Right? Um, then we see uh, Red Josh go onto, uh, onto his... Uh, Tex is his name. I like how every tethered character, no matter how minute, has a <laughs> name. <laughs> they have their own name. Yeah. Right? They're as, they're as individualistic as we are. Yeah. Right? Like, that's kind of the point. Um, and so, uh, Gabe tries to shoot him with a flare gun, but his flare gun was uh, lacking. So, it just kind of bounced off him. <laughs> he was just like, 
Okay. And meanwhile, they just fight on a boat and eventually Gabe kills uh, Tex. Tex, yes. Okay. Um, then um, uh, we see we see uh, Elizabeth Moss. Uh, eventually, she gets she gets uh, taken out by the son, who um, just smashes her right in the fucking head. Because don't mess with my mom. Um, I think she was on her sister at that point. On his sister, like oh. the mother was tied up. Oh right, and right, she right. Grabbed she grabbed the kill sister her. and was like. Like, you, want know how, you want to know how you got these scars? <laughs> <laughs> this is out. Yeah, uh, she cracked her in the head with like really bad art piece, but you know that's cool. Uh, so after everybody is dead, supposedly, um, family's just chilling, and, and um, Gabe is like, "Look, we got food, we got water, we got shelter. Everybody's dead. They can't get in here. This house is nice. We staying right here." And this is the moment where she was like, uh, uh, Adelaide is like, you don't get to make the decisions anymore. Like, nigga, you see what's going on outside? Um, but I thought that was kind of dope, right? Like, this idea of, like, you ain't ready for this. So why do you get to choose right. what's going on? Because, by the way, if you were staying in that house, you're probably going to get murdered. Like, yeah, you're going to get murdered, yo. Like, somebody's going to find out. As a matter of fact, they weren't all dead. Right. <laughs> but oh, let's just go to bed. Find- like, mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, you, look. There, there's a lesson for you in the zombie apocalypse. Keep stabbing until they make sure they don't move. <laughs> no. Lop their heads off like Rottweilers in Cabrini Green. Do whatever you got to do. So um, they're, they're watching television. They see um, this, the, these people you know, doing the hands across America kind of thing. And, and uh, they're trying to figure out what the fuck is going on. And, of course, Adelaide is... Uh, is uh, trying to understand it as well as she as she's watching it, but she has a better idea uh, as to what is happening, and it's just rows and rows of people. Um, they're like, "All right, we're going. Like, we got to get the fuck out of here. Like, I'm not sitting around waiting to die." And so they forget the car keys. Adelaide, for some strange ass reason, decides that she's going to go back and get the car keys. I've been like, mm, kind of busy. Not really trying to do that. She eventually runs to get the car key. She sees them on the table, and uh, one of the daughters pops out, and uh, and uh, she straight up um, fucking murders her. Uh, <laughs> she has a fucking frying pan. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, she was... Uh, That's she, a cast iron skillet, you know, like that? Yeah, seasoned. Pretty fucking heavy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Glink! Um, and so, yeah, just as Jason comes in to check on his mom... Uh, he sees his mom stabbing a woman to death with a pair of golden scissors, which is dope. And Jason is like, whoa, that's crazy. And I'd yeah. be like, go, mom. <laughs> <laughs> but again, like, remember, like, like to the whole Jason is tethered. Like, he just saw his mom stab this bitch with pretty, pretty professionally savage. <laughs> it's like, yeah. huh, Okay. I'm just following that in the old memory bank for later on, just in <laughs> right. case. This chick is crazy. <laughs> uh, then we get a really funny sequence. Um, Adelaide runs outside um, with the keys, and uh, Zora's in the car seat or in the driver's seat, and she's like, "Okay, I'm driving." <laughs> she's like, "You, you are handcuffed, mom and uh, dad. You got a busted knee. Um, I'm clearly the person who should be driving." And they're they're having an argument about it, and this is where Gabe is like, uh, "I killed two niggas <laughs> by myself. I should be driving, right? Yeah, my mom, kill points are higher." The daughter was like, "You only killed one. We killed two. First of all, yeah, no, nah, it ain't we shit." And the mother was like, "No, <laughs> you ain't. Kill- I just killed the second sister because you failed." And then dad was like, "All of y'all, shut the fuck up. I killed two by myself. I'm the man. I'm in charge." Go to drive the car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because because uh, what is it? Red or or the uh, umbre umbre pops up and she's and, and um, she's like, oh, all right, well, I'm just gonna drive the car right into my doppelganger, which is the correct move. Right, right. Dad was like, all right, back up, back up, back right. up, back up, back up. Like, like, nigga, hit the gas. <laughs> 
And so uh, Umbre jumps on top of the car and then apparently applies a lot of pressure with a pair of golden scissors and right. stabs <laughs> through the fucking moonroof. Now, you know how much fucking strength you would need to put I'm scissors to through. They're very powerful. <laughs> yeah, they I all they doing kind of on their exercise they doing down, down there. I assume I ain't when, weights. I assume that when they're sleeping, they're just doing calisthenics, <laughs> right? Just doing all nothing but body weight exercises <laughs> all day, every day. My nigga, we we Yo, got nothing else. To when do. she sped up and she fucking like, I was watching this with my wife. I had told her the story way back when, and she remembered. So she's just watching this, kind of like how we are. But she was driving, and she was like, "Drive, drive!" Because you know, my wife gets very emotional when it comes to shit like this. It's like, "Drive, drive, drive!" And she was like, "Yeah!" And then, and then the umbra jumped up on the car. She was like, "Yeah, yeah!" Oh, 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 <laughs> oh my damn! Yeah. Was like, I was not expecting this. <laughs> yeah, neither, neither was any of the rest of them in that car. That's really funny. Like, oh shit, I'm out of ideas. <laughs> 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 Keep driving, girl. <laughs> that was fucking hilarious. Yeah, so Umbre ends up on the front hood of the car as they're driving, and she then puts the scissors through the front windshield. Again, the level of strength it would take to push scissors through that is crazy. Um, and so they just, uh, Zora keeps driving and starts driving faster and faster and faster, and then just hits the brakes. And then uh, Umbre goes flying off. And, yeah, literally. <laughs> yeah. And she went into uh, the woods. And what se- it seems like she... The tree split her in she half. She broke her back. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and she was just there kind of laughing and, you know, smiling or whatever as uh, Adelaide went and checked on her to see if she was dead. Um, and you could tell, like, Adelaide almost kind of feels sorry for the kids. Yeah. Uh, so she doesn't kill her, but she ain't trying to save her either and just let this poor girl die, which is fine because that's what I would have done. Um, yeah, she pushed the uh, she puts the, uh, the the windshield wipers on that, and Umbra's like, "What the fuck is this? <laughs> Man, we all had that downstairs. What the fuck?" That's what got to her to like kind of release the hold on the scissors yeah. in the uh, windshield, and then she just hits the brakes and goes flying into the game trees. Yeah, because I guess if she was holding the scissors, she would have had enough strength, I guess, to just hold on, which is insane. Um, meanwhile, back in the car, everybody everybody's in, uh, and they just they're driving. They're like, "We got to get to the coast. We got to get the fuck out of here." So they get to the coast, and they see there's just nothing but uh, madness. There as well, people have been pulled out of the cars and murdered by, I assume, their own doppelgangers. Um, they drive around a corner, uh, they see their car, their car is in the middle of the street and it's on fire. Um, oops. And, um, Adelaide is, Adelaide is like, oh shit, like this is crazy. And, uh, out pops Pluto, um, Jason's doppelganger. He like popped from under their car, which almost led me to believe he was riding under their car the whole time. Like, <laughs> like where the fuck did you come from? Um, and so he pops out, and he's he's motioning the same. He's he's snapping, but I, I guess is he's motioning the same idea of the magic trick of doing the lighter. Either that, or he's desperately trying to get the beat the for beat I, I've got five on it stuck in his head. He's like, God, that was a really good song, not about drug dealing. And um, so eventually, all the kids and uh, Gabe get out of the car because they um, uh, Jason realizes it's it's a trap. And he's like, oh, shit, get out of the car. And everybody gets out. And you you find out that he, um, uh, Pluto actually put gasoline on the ground and, and was set to put a match uh, on the gas and blow up their car. Um, Jason gets out and he realizes that he could possibly control the tethered Pluto to him. And he raises his arms and backs up and backs him directly into the fire killing Pluto. Uh, this is the entire point of why I don't think that Jason is the tethered. Like I think yeah. that he is he's a he's just a normal kid from from uh, upstairs, as it were. Um and that kid dies. And uh that was a pretty good action sequence of showing him back into the fire and actually catch fire. That was dope. And that's clearly just like a small person and not a kid. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just thought that was fun. Um and then standing right next to a conveniently uh, similar colored SUV to her outfit, Red comes out and scoops up uh, Jason and runs off with him. Um, 
Nah, she'd have to die at that point. <laughs> like you're no. not just you just not That's gonna just, go. Yeah, you're not just gonna take my kid. Fuck that. Um, even though I left you to die underground dwelling. Right. You ain't gonna take my kid. You know, you know what I had to do to earn this life? Yeah, exactly. Well, of course you do. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. hey, good luck with all that. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck out of here. Um so she so uh, Adelaide eventually makes it to the magical forest. Uh, the little owl pops out and she was like, I'm not having any of that. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking immediately uh, hit that thing with the, the, the fire poker, which is pretty, uh, pretty hilarious. Um, and she eventually, uh, she remembers where she needs to go to get down to, uh, down to the tethered. And she does. One of my favorite shots in the movie is this scene. Like she's going through this basement and everything else and everything seems normal, but she eventually gets to, um, low enough that she gets to a escalator and the escalator scene. I think I appreciated Jordan Peele's move here. Cause every, every horror movie that has a hero, unlike Candyman, um, <laughs> that doesn't have a hero really. Um, you got to give the hero that moment of like them ready for that sort of final battle. And that shot of her coming down the escalator, I think is just a really fucking cool. Like that's just a really beautiful shot. Yeah. Just with the with the color from the stair from the from the escalator with her skin color and like the bloody clothes and everything else. It just it feels like a, you know, uh like John McClane getting ready to storm Nakatomi Plaza or any like sort of action movie kind of moments. It's just it's just a it's a great scene. She's got a weapon like of course you need that and everything else um and so she eventually makes it down uh and she makes it down into this hallway and this is where the movie just like fuck you well what would you think was going to happen we were going to go a completely different uh route and it's just a hallway and it's just a bunch of bunnies hanging out and bunnies are adorable <laughs> so you come to find out she eventually finds red and Red has this conversation with her that I thought was really well done. Red has got her back to Adelaide and the camera is facing like right up close to Red's face as she's explaining everything that's happening and like what she did to her for the most part. And you just have her like you have Adelaide behind her. It, it was it was a cool scene because you could shoot both. You could shoot clearly both things and just mm. kind of mesh them together, which was dope. Um, so then we get a flashback to the beginning of the movie uh, about um, about how Adelaide uh, came to be. And uh, I like the contrasting shots of the upstairs people and the downstairs people. Yeah. What like they're forced to do doing the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. And it's <laughs> fucking wild. It's, it's wild, man. But you see like they, they have their own bum. They have, you know, all the people on the roller coasters. Like it's, it's a cool, it's a cool dichotomy between the two. Like people showing, showing people, people that showing, showing that the haves and the have nots are all just like the same people doing the same shit as everyone else. Just but different circumstances. Is, just different circumstances. And like, why is there this, the, like the, the, I don't, I don't know. It just, it's very, it's, it's a very cool, subtle little commentary well and also and, and i just noticed this when i rewatched it uh for the show the escalator there's not two of them do you notice that there's only the one going down right so you have to like to me that speaks to like upward mobility mm -hmm. like you have to push super hard yeah, you to get up the fucking escalator right, right. where if you want to go down that's super oh, yeah, that's easy, easy. That's <laughs> easy. you burn up all your money and you go you can go down to the bottom with no problem but for you to fight to get all the way up which is why red the initial red is so special because she had the ability to fight all the way to get all the way to where she was right to get there because of course there are people who've been in the hall of mirrors right like obviously yeah but nobody has ever made it up to change places or to kind of make it out. Right. So, you know, that, that is actually uh, pretty interesting. Um, and so Red talks about the plan that she had of uh, everybody exacting their revenge on all of the people uh, upstairs, basically, and how they had planned this and how everybody believed Red's plan because she... Because Red could speak. <laughs> Red could speak and also Red could dance and do her own thing. And it's interesting because as I'm, as I'm 
thinking about it right now, it makes sense. Earlier, they talked about how um, Adelaide was like a really good dancer, but then just stopped all of a sudden at 14. Sure. And it's because... It wasn't Adelaide. It, right. Because Red was basically like, okay, I'm kind of done doing that. Mm-hmm. And so she was amazing when she was dancing downstairs, and then she was just like, no, I don't want to do that anymore. And so she was tied to her, right? And then she forced her, and then when she stopped, she couldn't do it anymore. Yeah. So she was just, you know, she was at sort of the beck and call of right. Adelaide. Like Red had to had to develop her own. She had to untether herself. They, the two of them had to become untethered, and Red had to untether herself from the real Adelaide in order to fucking function. Right. Like she didn't speak. She couldn't speak. Right. She had to learn how to speak again. Yeah. Like she like you said, she couldn't dance because she never learned it. Adel right, she never learned it and Adelaide stopped dancing. She was too busy fucking trying to kill trying her to, <laughs> trying to plot revenge and shit. Right. Like but again, when you watch it a second time, like that is much more obvious. And like it it answers a lot of questions that I didn't have answers to before watching the second time, but it also creates a lot of questions too. Which is why Get Out is so interesting. Like, mm-hmm. you know, why would you do that? Why wouldn't you do this? You know, stuff like that. Um, so then we just get like a really weird, creepy sequence of Red um, kind of almost dancing around yeah, and, her. And Red is literally like, I stopped dancing, but I know how to dance. You don't know how to dance. Come on. You want to get nuts? Come on. Let's dance. Yeah, let's have a dance fight at the end. And, but you don't know how to dance. You don't know how to fight. Like, she's pirouetting from fucking fire poker swings and shit. That, that was a yeah. great <laughs> scene. <laughs> <laughs> and I, and I, did, I did like... Like, like Floyd Mayweather doing ballet and shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, nah, yo. But I did like the part where she, like, Adelaide takes a swing and she misses and she's like, Gah! She's like yeah, so bad. Like, fuck, you're so good at this. She's just, she's, right. She's like, regressing. She's, she's just like, what the Arr! fuck, yo? Like, I can't fucking do this shit. This is really <laughs> pissing me off. Yeah, it is. It's it's actually kind of great how how angry she gets at her. She, <laughs> and she's like, oh, it's like no problem. Like, fuck you. Um, and it's just it's it's a really great dichotomy with the two her playing both characters, mm-hmm. right? Like it, it just it's smart. And meanwhile, she's also stabbing her with the with the scissors and like cutting her the whole yeah, time. Like a too. fucking bullfighter. Right. Yeah. I mean basically, yeah. Well, I mean kind of a wild animal. Yeah. You know, versus, you know, someone who is far more experienced. Um yeah, and then at one point she just blocked and just threw her ass into a wall, <laughs> which I was like, <laughs> God damn, this is wildly disrespectful. Um Eventually, uh, Adelaide gets the better of Red and uh, stabs her through the chest. Ow. Um, And after she puts her down, like, uh, you know, uh, Red is still talking and, like, still saying shit. Like, you know, kind of eat a dick. She's trying to whistle. The real Adelaide, who is now the the, uh, bum, (laughs) for lack of a better term, is trying to whistle. Yeah, and she's and, like, nah, fuck that. And the doppelganger who who we follow throughout the movie uh, takes the the chains, uh, a symbol goes. of being tethered to something, yeah. and is fucking trying to rid herself of the original Adelaide um, to the point where she like makes these guttural savage noises and right. shit, like uh, uh, <laughs> right, <laughs> chokes her to death, takes the takes a chain from around. Uh, the real Adelaide in the red jumpsuit has like uh, 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 the last thing that that mm-hmm. kept her, you know, her humanity, right? And then you see that that what we would come to find out is the fake Adelaide uh, finds the son who is in a locker. Who is in like the fucking fetal position? Yeah, and nigga, shit. I'm scared. Right, I'm <laughs> but he's scared. also got he also has like air holes at his eye level. Right. right. So I'm assuming he can see and hear everything that's going on in here, and, and like <laughs> oh, nigga, <laughs> y'all <are> wiling. <laughs> and luckily, they had that speech in the other room. Right, <laughs> but it is. Yo, it's kind of weird, yo. Like, he's like, I don't know, yo. 
Oh no, mom, you making me. Yeah, when she hugs him, he's just like, oh, I don't like any of this. Right. She's like, look, look, it's me. It's me. Look, I'm, it's me. The real me. You know, the, the real, real me. The, the one who grew up here. I mean, you know, who never been down here until today. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I need you to keep believing me. Yeah, because I'm going to find your doppelganger down here, too. We'll make another one. I'm going to leave your ass down here. Get it together. Um, he's like, yeah, mom, I'm sorry. And he's like, all right, I, too, have five on it. <laughs> Please just don't murder me, you psycho. Um, yeah, so then uh, she makes it back uh, uh, topside with her son. And uh, we see more of the uh, the tethered. They're all in red doing their hands across America thing. Um, and when driving away, uh, we get all of the explanation of uh, young young red grabbing Adelaide uh, when she was, when she was eight years old and dragging her down, handcuffing her, switching shirts with her going up, pretending to be Adelaide. And then that is who Lupita Nyong'o grows up to be, Um, which is, which is super interesting because like they explain why she didn't talk when they first got her back after she went missing and everything else and all they, he does a really good job of sort of tying up all the loose ends there at the end. I I thought it was clever. Um, And because the original Adelaide was wearing a hands across America shirt at the time, that's why she had the idea that she had. Yeah. Um, That eventually comes to fruition in the movie. Um, the Wikipedia says that she actually damaged her uh, vocal cords, vocal vocal cords when she choked her at first, mm-hmm. which also explains why she has the the yeah. voice that she has. Not just because she was um, downstairs, because she would still be able to talk normally, right. even even if no one else talked to you, unless you just stop talking. Yeah, because yeah. she doesn't say anything when she when they first show her wake up, like she doesn't speak, and she grabs her throat like, uh, yeah, fuck? exactly. Um, so then we see the we see the family uh, like that kind of vision is happening in grown Lupita Nyong'o's head, and then we see her kind of snap out of it, and then she looks over at Jason, and Jason is like, "Bitch," he's like, "Yeah, I see it too. Yeah, I see it too. Now, you crazy? You super crazy?" And I saw what happened downstairs, and she's like, and then she she gives the the classic moment in any good horror movie. She gives that fucking smile like, huh? "Yeah." Don't forget that shit. I'll choke your ass out too. Um, and then she slowly smiles and, and and turns forward and pretends like everything is normal. Yeah, and Jason is still it. like, nah, yeah. I don't trust her. <laughs> and he he puts his mask down. And he's like, and his eyes still don't move from her. Like, Mm-mm. I hope I'm not half tethered. And uh, so then we just see them drive away in an ambulance, trying to get out of town. And then it sort of the camera pans up, and there's like helicopters showing all of the hands across America, uh, bums across America, I guess. Um, but again, it is at the end of the day, what I read from that was if you continue to ignore and abuse the disaffected, they will eventually arrive, they will, they will rise up and they will kill you. Yeah. Um, I mean, you better fucking rich. question mark. <laughs> right, what the fuck the Joker was about to be. It, it was. I mean, because it was. apparently in the Joker that that eleven eleven was on all the fucking clocks, and whenever he was in um. Oh therapy. right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so you want to? Hey, you want to hit? Want to hit him with some religion yeah, there, yeah. Micah? You want to? You want to hear a benevolent God speak? <laughs> I'll really? kill all of you. Uh, mm, so now I, the Lord, warn them that. I am going to bring destruction on them, and they will not escape. And when they cry out to me for help, I will not listen to them. Hmm. Well, there you go. Don't fuck with me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't fuck with me. But yeah, I mean, don't don't just ignore the, the yeah. people who are disaffected. You should, you should pay attention, because uh, if not, they're going to come for you. Like the meat shall inherit the earth. Yeah, I mean that's basically that's basically <laughs> kind of what it is. It. Again, I don't know how people miss this. Nigga, Hands Across America was in the first minute and a half. Yeah, I mean, but I don't think a lot of people know what Hands Across America. Yeah, is. Like, All right, fine. If you are look, if you are twenty and don't know what Hands Across America is, that fine. makes sense. Yeah. If you are our age and don't know what Hands Across America is, well, I was, I was a six. Five. Fucking deal. Yeah, I was six. Uh, yeah, you were six. <laughs> six, but. 
You've heard of it. Yeah. Of course. I'm not an idiot. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and if not, you know, Google. look it up. Google, Google it. Yep. Yeah, Google that shit. Google it. Um, but yeah, I, I think the movie is is far better than people get a credit. I, yeah, uh, I read a, um, an article a while ago when this movie came out that spoke about how there are no real monsters, no real bad guys in us. Who cares? Because, no, that's the point they're making. Oh, I was like, oh, I thought you were saying something. No, it's not a complaint. It's the, that's the point. Is The mm. point is that this is us, all of us. Right. And we are put in different circumstances. And, like, no one can blame Red for seeing an opportunity and want to get out of where she is and taking it. Right. Even if it meant somebody's got to take her place because that's the kind of like the human condition. Right. Like again, you, I mean, they basically, basically seize the means of production. <laughs> <laughs> Don't fuck with the proletariat. Man. Like, like, yeah, red took her, her, took her shot. She got it. Right. But then Adelaide was like, yo, fuck you. I want that shit back. Right. Yeah. And so you can't really blame either one of them. Exactly. No, who the hell wants to live in a subway tunnel right. their whole life? Like, no, Eat rabbit. Right. Raw rabbit, yo. They ain't had no seasoning. I didn't see I didn't see anybody who were pretending to sprinkle salt and pepper and some fucking adobo on anything. Mm. So yeah. It's man. fucked up. This is uh, She also tells me those scientists who made this were white. Right. <laughs> you have some seasoning? No, you don't need it. Nah. It's too spicy. <laughs> salt? Yes. Salt. It hurts the throat. Um Yeah, so yeah, you can understand. And yes, the point of it being all of us. We are all guilty of this. We we are. Like, everybody is guilty of being like, that's not my problem. Yeah. Let somebody else deal with it. We all do it, even if we're good intention 90% of the time. That 10% mm. of the time, we're all guilty of it. So, again, Peel does a really good job in making movies. I don't even know that I would categorize these as horror movies, though. Right. They're like, kind of like social I mean, they're, thrillers, they're, in a way. They're social commentaries disguised as genre movies, right? Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. They're, you know, as opposed to some guy calling his movie a real movie in the disguise of a comic book movie. Like, but that's kind of what this is. This yeah. is a social commentary disguised as a genre piece. And, um, would you like he's to see, really good at it. Would you like to see him do, do that in different genres besides horror? Um, I, I, I don't know. I think horror is, um, is, Unique. It's a form of science fiction that, you know, and science fiction is generally used as allegory to talk about, you know, the things that happen in the real world. So I think it's actually really good. I don't know what other type of genre he would talk about social class in or, or some sort of social issue in. Um, comic books have been done to death in yeah, terms of social so. class. Uh, you know, Westerns are too straightforward. Um, rom coms, like I like that uh, would certainly be interesting. Yeah, it would certainly be interesting. But again, I feel like you would go. I feel like the easiest, the only way I can think of it would be to talk about race in that point. Yeah, I, I'm very interested to see what, what he other does. social commentary would you like to see him talk Ooh, about? Oh, that's a good question. In the horror movie, in, in any type of in any format, but yeah, like, but. Yeah, we could stick with horror, but like in any race, format. class. I mean, those are the two biggies. Yeah, like what else? You, <laughs> race, class, gender. Like, gender, yeah, I mean, sure. but and gender, sex. Is, you, you could deal yeah, with sex, gender. And I mean, and with yeah, you would have to lump gender in with sexual, like, like identification. I don't, think he, I don't think he should write that by himself. I don't think he no. should do it at all. <laughs> like, if he were to like, I get someone else to write it, he direct it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Or just, I mean, co-write it with somebody. Yeah. That's fine. Um, I mean, that's a sticky wicket, man. You don't want to. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, because God knows they're gonna be source on that one. Like, yeah. I'm very offended by all of this. Now he does have Lovecraft Country, which is an upcoming drama horror television series based on uh, a novel of the same name by Matt Ruff, uh, set to premiere on HBO. The talk is that it's coming soon. Um, I mean, it's. Uh, principal photography for the show began July of 2018, um, but not it hasn't started filming yet. So, who knows? So we'll see. 
Yeah, we'll see. Uh, I am looking forward to more stuff by Peel. I think his next thing is Candyman. Good. I think he. I think it already finished. I think they already finished filming it. Like good. I think they did it like relatively quickly, like in a month or two. So, um, I mean, it's Candyman. I don't. I don't feel like you need like a lot of like deep like seven months of production on that one. So. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, how, I mean, how much time does it really take to reverse cannonball out of a window? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, um, all right, guys, that is it for uh, episode one sixty three. Um, us, and we will see you guys next week for another preview episode. See you. Take it easy. Bye. You're watching the Black on Black Cinema YouTube channel. Make sure you check out our full reviews of black movies, past and present. And every other week, we do a preview episode where we talk about a random topic that affects the black community.